Bill O'Reilly here, Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. Democrats prepare for the 10th debate in South Carolina. President Trump announces a new defense agreement with India. The coronavirus spreading to Europe and the Middle East. Marijuana use among senior citizens on the rise. New study shows 4 in 10 adults now consider themselves workaholics. Also ahead, why Americans do not trust the media. But first, seven Democrats face off tonight in South Carolina before Saturday's primary vote. Latest polls there have Biden in the lead, 24 percent, Sanders 21, Steyer 17, Buttigieg 11. South Carolina is the first contest where a majority of Democratic voters are African-American. The debate tonight should be a tough one for frontrunner Bernie Sanders. Full analysis tomorrow. The president in India unveiling a new $3.5 billion defense pact with that country, proving the sale of helicopters, guns, and other military equipment. Mr. Trump announcing the agreement before 100,000 supporters at the largest cricket sports stadium in the world, telling the crowd America will always love and respect the Indian people. The coronavirus outbreak spreading to locations in Europe and the Middle East, the disease killing six in Italy and more than 50 in Iran, as China issues new travel restrictions. Global health experts say there are roughly 80,000 confirmed cases worldwide, leaving 3,000 people dead. The news sent the stock market down 1,000 points yesterday. The number of senior citizens consuming marijuana nearly doubling since some states legalized the drug a few years ago. Researchers at NYU say 4.2% of Americans over the age of 65 use cannabis for medicine and recreation. That number was just 2.2% in 2015. How are the seniors getting the pot? According to the survey, their grandchildren. Far out. New study says 4 in 10 adults simply cannot stop working. The overzealous employees, described as workaholics, spend more than 15 hours a week focused on their jobs outside the office. 75% regularly check emails over the weekend, and 30% refuse to ditch their smartphones during dinner time. In a moment, Americans do not believe there will be fair coverage of the presidential election. We'll tell you what's going on next. You have trusted me for years to give it to you straight, no spin, and look out for you. So please take my advice today. Start preparing. While the media is busy distracting you, there are real threats to our health and safety that few talk about. Economic turmoil, quarantines, civil unrest can happen often in the blink of an eye. You either have a plan or risk being with the panicked masses staring at empty shelves. Go to preparelikebill.com. Get 45% off a two-week emergency food kit from my friends at My Patriot Supply. Kits include breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and last up to 25 years in storage. My Patriot Supply ships fast and discreetly. 45% off, no spin, great deal. While supplies last at preparelikebill.com, preparelikebill.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Americans say they do not trust the media to report honestly on the upcoming presidential election campaign. According to Pew Research, 82% of Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents and 84% of Republicans say they are very or somewhat concerned about the influence that made-up news could have on the election. 48% of Democrats, 49% of Republicans say they are very concerned about fake news, and they should be. In all, 75% of Americans following the election are very concerned about made-up information. Now, the problem is money. Media companies do not try to appeal 
to all Americans anymore. Instead, the New York Times, the Washington Post, NBC News, CNN, etc., make their profits catering to liberal Americans. Fox News does the opposite, programming basically for conservatives. So who's covering the news for everyone? Well, no one. As a result, stories are ignored that may help President Trump or a Democrat candidate. Other stories are distorted on the same basis. So, the news industry has morphed into another sports industry. Root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. The result is a mass distortion. I mean, how are you at home supposed to know what's true and what's fiction? You can't. The ultimate result of this will be a media collapsed, and an ill-informed public. Already, the nightly news broadcasts are declining drastically. CBS News is now below 6 million viewers each night. That's a disaster. CNN's ratings are in the tank. MSNBC falling as well. Since Fox News is the only major news agency that supports Donald Trump, It has that market all to itself, so its ratings stay steady. Now, the Founding Fathers gave the press in America special privileges because the Founders knew that the American people had to have honest information in order to make responsible voting decisions. We live in a country where the real power is centered in the population, you, the American person. But now, if you cannot get factual information from the media, which is, again, using special privileges in order to make billions of dollars, if you can't get the truth, how are you going to know what's going on? It's impossible, and it's a brutal situation. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by actually writing it. For more news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com, where you will find honest reporting on the campaign. In a moment, something you might not know. Computer systems in cars, now common. There are electronically controlled transmissions, touchscreen displays, and dozens of sensors. All of this advanced tech is expensive to fix, when it breaks. That's why I have Car Shield. Car Shield has affordable protection plans that can save you thousands for a covered repair, including computers, GPS, electronics, and more. With Car Shield, you're behind the wheel of your plan. Choose your favorite mechanic to do the work, and Car Shield takes care of the rest. They even offer 24 7 roadside assistance and a rental car while yours is being fixed. Free. With rates as low as $99 a month, you have little to lose. Get covered by CarShield today. Please call 800-CAR-6000 and mention code BILL. Or go to carshield.com and use code BILL to save 10%. A deductible may apply. That's carshield.com, code BILL. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Each year, the Bloomberg News Organization releases a list of the wealthiest places to live in the country. According to the Census Bureau, more than 600 billionaires and 19 million millionaires reside in the USA. That's more than any place else on Earth. From big cities to tiny towns, here are the richest places in this country. First, Darien, Connecticut, a suburb of New York City, the average income there tops 350000 bucks per person. Famous residents include New York Yankees general manager Brian Cashman. Not a bad commute. The village is just 30 miles from Yankee Stadium. The Chicago suburbs of Glencoe and Winnetka, next on the list. The tree-lined streets are featured in classic American films like Home Alone and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The median home price 
In both neighborhoods, more than 1.1 million. That's the median. Over to Short Hills, New Jersey, the Garden State has 16 towns in the top 100, but only one in the top 10. Average salary in Short Hills, 400000 a year. That's six times the regional average. Next, Los Altos Hills, California, home to Silicon Valley's wealthiest CEOs. Do not plan on stopping off at Starbucks within the city limits because the town is strictly residential. It doesn't even have a post office, just expensive homes. Cherry Hills Village, Colorado, outside of Denver, home to the best schools in the country. Alums include two secretaries of state, Madeleine Albright and Condoleezza Rice. Hillsboro, California, home to the infamous Flintstone House, a $3 million property decorated with dinosaur statues. Tourists love it, but the locals hate it. Town sued the owners last year. Scarsdale, New York, richest town on the East Coast. The village is just 13 miles outside of New York City. Average household income, a half million dollars. Wow. Richest place in the USA. Ready? Atherton, California. Another Silicon Valley play. The cheapest home in that town goes for $3 million, the cheapest. So if you have the cash, you'll be neighbors with Google executives, the former CEO of eBay and NBA All-Star Stefan Curry. Back after this. It is shocking that your home can be easily stolen. That's a lesson Deborah learned when thieves found her home's title online, forged it, and then took ownership. In an instant, thieves legally owned Deborah's home, and actually, she got evicted and spent a fortune in legal fees trying to get her house back. The FBI calls home title fraud one of the fastest growing crimes. I urge you to protect your home with home title lock. Thieves hunt legal documents online, forge them, stating you sold your home, Then they borrow against it, and you get the payments. No insurance or bank can protect you. Only Home Title Lock does. You could already be a victim of title fraud and not know it. So please register your home at HomeTitleLock.com and enter BILL, B-I-L-L, for one month of free protection. That's BILL for one month free at HomeTitleLock.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.